Hello YouTube and welcome to another AV Helicopters video. Today we're going to have a look at some recommendations for flight simulators. How to virtually itch that helicopter flying bug if you can't get airborne in reality. Now, just to start us, this is not supposed to be a definitive list of all flight simulators that have been and gone. However, I will point out some good programs that I've used uh, and the pros and cons against each now, I'll be focusing predominantly on software for the PC. However, I will include some honorable mentions uh, for apps on mobile devices. Now, one thing it is worth mentioning, no matter what sort of simulator you go for, it's all a little bit irrelevant unless you have the right sort of input device uh, to use with this simulator. Really, a mouse and a keyboard or a, a gamepad are not ideal for, for use with uh, flight simulators. Now, you can go to the kind of the top end of the market and, and a full helicopter cyclic and collective setup, but they can be in the order of $400 uh, dollars, uh, or above. Um, However, uh, a joystick, like a, a Cytec, uh joystick that I've got here, um, really you, you can pick up for, for closer to, to 40 or $30. And that, that's good enough. Obviously, um, using a, a throttle it is not quite the same as using a collective, but it's a good uh, introduction to, to flying helicopters and it certainly is still useful um, for, for keeping your eye in. So we'll start out with a program called DCS World, that's Dynamic Combat Simulator. Uh, it's a free simulator that allows you to purchase additional add-ons or modules. The game itself is the development of a simulator that's been around for, for over 15 years or so, starting as Flanker 2.0. And the simulation model itself is around modern air combat uh, aircraft. However, there are a number of helicopter add-on modules um, that are very good. The terrains that are modelled in the simulator are the Crimea, so around uh, Russia and Ukraine, um, Las Vegas and Nevada in America, and the Persian Gulf centred around Dubai. Um, my personal favourite in terms of the modules though, uh, and perhaps the most realistic for helicopter dynamics across all of the simulators uh, in this list that we'll cover in this video, is the iconic Bell UH-18 Huey. Uh, the team did a fantastic job of bringing this iconic helicopter to life in the simulator and it, and it really does have one of the most realistic or, or hardest, you could say, um, flight dynamics are on this list. Um, they've managed to model uh, auto rotations, engine start, vortex ring, loss of tail rotor effectiveness, uh, over pitching translational lift, blade flapping, uh, as well as helicopter sling load operations uh, and quite a good damage model as well. Um, so you can look at specific failures, either caused by combat or, or just uh, mechanical failures. Um, it's available on the Eagle Dynamics website for purchase. I'll, I'll put a link in the comment section below. Um, well, the downside to the simulator is it, it's, it's predominantly based uh, around combat. So there aren't that many civilian helicopters that are available for purchase at this moment in time. Uh, there's the Huey, the, the Russian Mi-8 Hip, uh, and the Gazelle. Um, there's also a, a Russian attack helicopter, the KA-50 Shark. Um, however, the, the good thing with DCS, there's constantly new products being developed uh, and released. There's, there's a, an OH-58 
uh, corral that's being developed at the moment, for example. So look out for, for further um, aircraft that are on the market. Next one up on the list is Microsoft Flight Simulator X. Now this was released back in 2006 uh, and is a continuation of a long running uh, Microsoft Flight Sim series. Um, which has often actually been used in commercial simulators for pilot training. Um, so FSX, um, the, the pros of it, well, there are hundreds of add-on aircraft that can be purchased either um, or, or downloaded as freeware for, for the game um, to increase the number of aircraft that can be flown in addition to the, the stock Bell Jet Ranger, the 206 and the R22 helicopter that come as part of the game. Um, because it covers the entire world, it actually makes for a fantastic simulator when training for procedures. What do I mean by that? Well, if you're trying to learn instrument procedures, how to fly an ILS, how to navigate from one VOR to another, um, then the simulator is fantastic because you can use real life um, Jepson plates, for example, or approach plates, uh, and then fly an approach on the simulator itself whilst tuning in order of the navigation aids, setting up the GPS uh, correctly as you would do in real life. Um, and as I said, with the addition of third party add-on aircraft, then th that scope of uh, number of aircraft that can be flown. Um, some some favourites of mine, the, the Milsim series of add-on aircraft and the Nemeth design series of aircraft, which I'll leave links to in the comment section below, uh, really increase the number of flyable helicopters with, with a good level of detail and, uh, and accuracy. So there's the pros of the, the simulator. The downsides, well, if I'm honest, the flight model of the helicopters just within the game it, it is not very good. Uh, on the base helicopters itself, uh, doing an orbit rotation it, it is not possible. So um, what, one of the downsides definitely is the unrealistic nature of the, the flight model. Um, hovering is, is actually relatively easy and the, the specific helicopter dynamics don't seem to be modelled. Now there are ways to, to, to improve the flight model and I've mentioned those third party uh, apps um, and the Heli Simmer uh, website has a great section on how to um, modify the game to make it more realistic but it is something definitely to, to bear in mind whilst there are missions that involve uh, helicopter specific operations like uh, sling load operation um, the, the dynamics really are a bit off what they would be in reality that moves us nicely on to X-Plane X-Plane its current version is X-Plane 11. It's a simulator that really, uh, rather than using um, code to tell you how the helicopter should fly, actually simulates in live, uh, in, in the live background, um, the aerodynamics um, calculations behind uh, an aircraft or a helicopter's uh, motion. It should be noted that there was further development of Microsoft Flight Sim X after it was released by Lockheed Martin. They bought the software and renamed it as Prepared, um, as Prepare 3D. Um, now, obviously, a number of items have been improved over the years, predominantly around the graphics side and uh, the ability to create training scenarios in both aviation, maritime and the ground type things. But I understand that the helicopter dynamics haven't been substantially improved, so I'm not going to go into it in a huge amount of detail, but the link to Prepared is in the comment section below. Included in Prepared, there are a huge number of aircraft, um, plus a, a large number of third-party um, add-on creators of, uh, of aircraft and helicopters that work for FSX also work for prepared um, given the fact they, they run under effectively the base same uh, same base code uh, it should be said that in prepared as stock you get access to the R22 which is also included in FSX but also the Super Stallion uh, the Black Hawk in a number of different variants plus a huge number of fixed wing aircraft
Finally, on the list, we have X-Plane 11. Now, like Flight Simulator, X-Plane has been around for a long time and gone through a number of various iterations. Um, it was first released in 1995. Here we are on version 11, and uh, it, it is very impressive. Unlike other simulators, it actually uses blade element theory to determine what the aircraft or helicopter will do at every stage of the flight versus other simulators that kind of use lookup tables um, to figure out what the flight conditions would be. So the simulator is very accurate uh, in terms of the aerodynamics. You can even design your own aircraft and aerofoils and test them in the simulator. From a helicopter point of view, well, this means that um, hovering is more realistic. It's harder, certainly. Um, so it, it certainly beats Microsoft Flight Sim on that front. Because you can design your own aircraft, it means that potentially you know, there's, a, there's an unlimited number of aircraft that can be developed. Um, I would say there's less payware aircraft, add-on aircraft, than there is for our Microsoft Flight Sim uh, FSX, but um, there's continually evolving uh, aircraft that can be bought for the simulator. In terms of flyable helicopters, well, the base game comes with a Sikorsky S76, but there are some really good add-ons from Dreamfoil Creations. They have a single squirrel, an AS350, and a free-for-use um, EC135 from Rotosim, which I've got uh, on the, the video play at the moment. It's an incredibly realistic uh, simulation of the systems and of the aircraft itself. Um, so x 11 has got an awful lot going for it. Like Microsoft Flight Sim, uh, the entire world is modelled, so you can use x to to play around with procedures, to, to get um, up to speed with instrument flying, for example. Now, one thing uh, that I must say about x 11, um, the graphics on it are fantastic, um, as you would expect from a game that was um, released only in 2016 and obviously been updated since then. The scenery, well, the entire world is covered. Now, there's obviously areas, localised hotspots, where the scenery is, is done better than others. Um, for example, London Heathrow, the, uh, the number of 3D objects is, is quite impressive and very realistic. But also, there are third-party developers, such as Orbix, which in the past have only developed scenery for repaired or FSX, have now moved over to X-Plane, and thus you can get some incredible photorealistic scenery from various places around the world. So it really makes it very realistic, in addition to the fact that it actually supports VR, or virtual reality, so you can, you can wear VR goggles and look around um, natively within the game if you have that sort of equipment. One thing to note, uh, against X-Plane 11. Whilst Flight Sim has uh, missions that can be um, flown for specifically for helicopters, for example, the sling loading or, or picking up uh, people off a platform, uh, X-Plane 11 doesn't really replicate that. So you can do some limited uh, sling load operations, but uh, really the, the main op point of the game is to go and fly, which it does very well. Now rounding out the list with the uh, applications on mobile devices, there are two that I can really recommend. First of all, there's X-Plane. Um, now X-Plane, it's only version 10 on the mobile, um, and it's, uh, it's a bit of a cut down version from what you can get on the computer. However, on the program, it comes with a Sikorsky S76 helicopter and uh, a couple of default train areas, including Seattle, Honolulu, um, and also Innsbruck in uh, in the Alps in Europe. The simulator model is very good, as you would expect from X-Plane. Um, it's great that you can turn on the flight dynamics um, so you can actually see what the airflow is doing around the helicopter. And incredibly so, the, the, the cockpits are all 
touchscreen, so so each component can be can be touch rotated. It actually makes it a bit of a pain when you're flying along and trying to redial in a new navigational frequency. But but it's all modelled there, and um, also you can model simulated failures. Uh, of certain components so if you if you want to have an engine flame out at uh, 100 feet above the ground yep you can do that um, or you can have electrical failures or smoke in the cockpit so really impressive to to combine the whole x-plane experience onto an iphone uh, and that's that's one of the ones that i, I recommend secondly there is aerofly fs now th these guys have been releasing um a new version every other year or so uh the latest version is 2020 um they have a couple of trains that are included uh, in in their software you can buy additional areas such as california um and switzerland uh, as well as the san francisco area themselves in this simulator there's the Robinson R22 helicopter. Uh, again, uh, it's very impressive what they've managed to fit into the uh, mobile device. Great 3D graphics. Um, the R22 simulator is, is really uh, very well done indeed. Um, very realistically modeled. Um, and uh, and the whole terrain is done nicely. There's clouds, um, a wide range of aircraft that you can fly different um, time settings uh, in terms of lighting, day and night and whatnot. So uh, for, for the iPhone or iPad, a, a fantastic um, simulator to download to use on the fly. That's it for now, I hope you enjoyed this video on flight simulation. Stay tuned for further videos on this subject and uh, the normal flying videos. And uh, thank you for watching, stay safe, see you soon.